It's time for Eric Plays Multiplayer Civ. Hey guys, how's it going? Let's uh, do a, another game of Civ here. Alright, there we go. And uh, so, uh, let's see. Dave wants to trade me, wants to do a research agreement and trade me some stuff. I'll accept. Okay. So it's been a little bit uh, since I last played. But since I last played, um, Civ uh, 6 was announced. So I guess that lights a bit of urgency under our butts in terms of trying to finish this game. Uh, that's going to come out uh, this October. That's really exciting. And it uh, looks like they're going to change so much that uh, it'll be worth uh, being done with these uh, multiplayer games because the games are going to be so different. A lot of different rule sets. I'm excited about a lot of it. Um, <clears throat> I'm excited about the, uh, the way that the cities are going to sprawl uh, and the way that there's districts and that the districts are going to affect... Um, what you can research and stuff like that. Um, interestingly, um, they said they were doing that because there are a lot of people who play the same way every time. Uh, and I'm sure that's true of a lot of people, especially the people on the Civ Reddit who are probably min-maxing the game every time if they're not playing with mods. Uh, for me, it actually tends to be pretty, um, pretty random. Um, I would say that in Civ 4, I had more of a um, of a tech tree that I would try and always do because I always wanted to be the first one to religion because the religions give you a lot of bonuses in Civ 4. Um, and here, because it's based on faith and and the buildings that you build, it's a little different. The the so I kind of tend to go on the tech tree based on what I'm trying to do and based on um, what's going on in the game. But yeah, so this whole thing here of having all these cities here, uh, that's going to go away. Although, you know, a lot of people are making a big deal of the uh, wonders being out in the world. And Stonehenge is right there. And uh, the Oracle is right there. So it's not like they don't do it right now in Civ 5. But they're definitely going to be doing it to a whole different level. So there's a Tyreem that's going around. And when it makes it all the way around this way, I don't know why I had to take the long way around for exploring. Perhaps I'll finally find Dan and Dave. And of course, um, since Dan watches this, he'll know where I am. But that's okay. Right, so it says it wants to go to the next turn already. I'm not sure if that's really true. Let's find out. Nope, I didn't think so. Alright, we're going to build a camp here. To catch these uh, deer. And... Yeah, for now... Everything else seems... Huh, so it looks like I have a Australia-like continent to myself, depending on what's going on up here. That would be great, unlike the game that I just finished up where um, so I was surrounded by Dan and others, and um, I chose to attack the others first, uh, which allowed Dan to capture the whole southern half. Although, uh, in my favor, given that Dan fights better than the... Uh, AI. Uh, it's probably a good thing I didn't try to attack Dan first. So the question now is whether or not I should ally with him. Um, I don't know if David watches these videos. He doesn't talk to me about it. I know Dan watches the videos. Um, but uh, my strategy for allying with Dan would be the fact that Dan and I are both on one continent and Dave is... Um, Dave is on the other continent, and um, ever since Civ 4, I've found intercontinental warfare to be uh, pretty tough, uh, especially because of the uh, movement penalties of getting back on land and all that stuff. Um, the map I was just in before, uh, given how close the other landmass is, 
it would depend on how much someone built something there. If I could, I probably what I want to do is get a settler over there as quickly as I can, so that that little uh, um, Gibraltar-like area can belong to me. All right. So here we go. Tokyo can fire on an enemy. They certainly can. Boom shakalaka. All right, this guy can go back here and heal slash protect the workers. Got a caravan moving around. All right, and a settler coming up soon. Pearls. I think pearls are one of the things that the Japanese like in this game. All right, let's see if it's truly the next turn. It is. But anyway, um, some people... Uh, found the Civ uh, 6 graphics to be very divisive. I don't know. Um, they were saying that Civ 5 was so realistic, and we'll see when we go back in there. But I, I mean, while Civ 6 is definitely going for more cartoony than realistic, I'm not certain that you would say Civ 5 is photorealistic, not in the way that. Um, that city skylines and cities XLR when you zoom all the way in. Not that I would say they're photorealistic, but they're still they're still pretty uh, pretty far along that scale when you're zoomed all the way in. All right, so here we go. Final final game. <laughs> All right, sacrificial captives. All right, here we go. Look at that! I didn't forget to change screens at all. Next turn. All right. Ooh, barbarians! Excellent. It's found a city. That did not help my gold, and definitely did not help my unhappiness. It is from the number of cities and population. Ugh. Not good. Not good at all. Alright. What will give me happiness? Happy, 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 joy, joy. None of this. Well, darn. I guess let's go for... Marketplace. Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. You're not happy enough. All right. Uh, let's see what everyone's got queued up. A settler. A lighthouse. All right, what do I have to do here? Okay. Settler. Some other things. Let's do a marketplace first. Market, market, still market. Ooh, Stonehenge. Eh. This would be really good. I need to. We'll leave it at that. I might have to do well soon. Next turn. All right, and that wraps it up. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on Eric Plays Multiplayer.